Today, we are going to look at the buildings that changed the skylines of many cities forever and talk about their main features. It all began in 1843 with an Englishman, Harry Bessemer, who invented the first process of mass producing steel, inexpensively, essential to the development of skyscrapers. Since then, the buildings soared higher and higher, pushing the boundaries of what physically is possible. The term skyscraper was used during the 1880s. Uh, that was probably shortly after 10 or 20 story buildings were built in the United States. Combining several innovations like steel structures, elevators, central heating, and probably electrical plumbing, skyscrapers came and dominated American skyline at the turn of the century. At that time, the Woolworth Building was the tallest building. Um, it was definitely considered the leading example of tall building design. Upon completion on May 20th, 1930, the added height of the spire allowed the cracks in the building to surpass 40 Wall Street as the tallest building in the world, and the Eiffel Tower as the tallest structure. It was the first man-made structure to stand taller than 1,000 feet. Less than a year after it opened to the public on May 27, 1931, the Chrysler Building was surpassed in height by the Empire State Building. The construction of the Empire State Building coincided with the Great Depression, giving jobs to 3,400 men Due to that fact, the building was constructed in the record time, 410 days. The longest world record held by the Empire State Building was the tallest skyscraper to structural height, which was held 42 years until it was surpassed by the North Tower of the World Trade Center in 1973. One of the major limiting factors in the building height is the issue of elevators. The taller the building, the more elevators are needed to service the building, requiring more space-consuming elevator banks. Yamasaki and the engineers decided to use a system with two sky lobby floors where people could switch from large capacity express elevator to a local elevator that goes to each floor in a section. This allowed the design to stack local elevators within the same elevator shaft. When the Sears Tower surpassed the World Trade Center in height, it was due to the remarkable design conceived by structural engineer Fonsler Khan. The design consisted of nine bundled structural tubes at the base. Two of the tubes would end at the 50th floor, two more at the 66th floor, four at the 90th floor, leaving the tallest tubes to continue to the top. The height of the towers that are typically measured to the top of their structural components, such as spires, do not include antennas. Uh, spires are considered integrated parts of the architectural design of the building to which any changes made would substantially change the appearance and the design of the building. Whereas antennas may be added or removed without such consequences, this fact played a very important role when spires of the Patronus Tower surpassed the height of the CS Tower. The main feature of these giants is the sky bridge between the 41st and 42nd floors, which is the highest two-story bridge in the world. It is not attached to the main structure, but instead, it's designed to slide in and out of the towers to prevent it from breaking during the high winds. The designers of Tepe 101 were faced with a very serious design problem. Because of the building location, the design had to be rigid enough to withstand the high winds and be flexible enough to resist the earthquake. Halfway through the construction, the building strength was tested. While the surrounding buildings crumpled under the force of the earthquake, the Tepe 101 remained undamaged. Burj Khalifa is currently the tallest building on the planet. The tower is designed by Skidmore, Owens and Merrill, which also designed the Willis Tower in Chicago and the new One World Trade Center in New York City, among numerous other famous high-rises. The building resembles the bundle tube form of the Willis Tower but it's not a bundle tube structure. Its design is reminiscent of Frank Lloyd Wright's vision of a mile-high skyscraper designed for Chicago. In conclusion, let's look at the progression of the skyscrapers in linear fashion. 